well, uh, murdered soul suspect. Uh, after beating it, I actually understand why a lot of reviewers don't like it. It is very easy to critique being a very mediocre game that doesn't do anything special, doesn't have any unique mechanics, uh, just a shit ton of collectibles and a pretty nice story to connect it all. <laughs> but you know what? I actually enjoyed it. Uh, if it costs like $15, I would say go and get it. Uh, otherwise, just wait for a sale. The reason I enjoy that is that while it doesn't do anything great, it doesn't do anything precisely awful as well, <laughs> making it a perfect coffee break game and generally a relaxing and a bit spooky experience. Uh, the story, for instance, is not mind-blowing, but the little twist in the end was all worth it. It surprises and strikes as a clever little thing that leaves you satisfied. <laughs> Mm, the characters are not exactly of Shakespearean quality, far from that in fact, but some of the dialogue I found good. Uh, I especially like how it is uh, actually a bit self-aware. Uh, I think my favorite moment was, uh, that I try to describe as vaguely as possible in order not to spoil it, is when the main character finds a dead body. Uh, the ghost of this dead man comes to him, who our protagonist immediately accuses of being a murderer. It is when I start getting a bit annoyed at the character's stupidity. <laughs> but when the next line the corpse says, How come I'm the murderer, you dumb fuck, I'm lying dead in front of you? <laughs> it only leaves a smile on my face, and there were several of these moments. What I didn't like about the story at all is how fast the main guy, I forgot the name of, actually gets used to being a ghost. In like 5 minutes he goes around possessing people without the slightest problem, uh, goes through walls, manipulates objects, uh, reads people's minds. I imagine if I became a ghost I would be psyched just about being able to go through walls and being able to scare people to death let alone the whole mind possession business. And yeah, I do understand that an hour long tutorial and power gaining would be infinitely more boring, but still, the whole transition into the ghost is way too fast and sloppy. The worst thing about the game in general is the game mechanics. <laughs> they are just dull and repetitive. Collecting stuff is basically the only thing you do in the game, uh, because it is the only thing that's required to solve mysteries, uh, which is the focus of the game. <laughs> you just collect shit and choose two or three objects to answer a predetermined question, kinda how a low budget iOS game works. Mm, the combat is laughable as well, but not because you QD enemies to death, it is because you gotta be an underdog in the whole situation, but in reality, you are the hunter, while demons from hell are your helpless victims. I mean, poor things only have their arbitrary patrol paths, while you can just go through a wall behind them and annihilate the poor bastard, leaving the others only to shit their pants. <laughs> but again, uh, this easiness doesn't make the whole thing neither frustratingly annoying nor special, so it is like it was never there. Overall, the whole thing goes fast and relaxing, so if you like murder mysteries, wait till Soul Suspect gets heavily discounted and get it. It is an okay game. <laughs> uh, by the way, I know that the graphics in the game are not exactly great, much like everything else, but the fact that it ran at 250 FPS on my machine was so refreshing after watching Watch Dogs stumble every time it had to render anything more than a blank wall. <laughs> So Murder Soul Suspect runs as smooth as silk, and it is pleasant just out on itself. <sighs> Thanks for watching guys, the name is Grwacher, and I shall see you from within my next video.